Okay, so we, if you see in the middle of your screen where it says got it, go ahead and touch that so it'll go away. And I'm gonna close my door because it's kind of loud. You want Rich in here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Come on in, Rich, and we'll let you go first because you got places to go. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Great. Chair. I'm gonna let you sit front and center when I get done introducing. Hi, Rose. Here comes Liam. <laughs> Give folks another minute to get connected. Hi, Liam. Good to see you. You can unmute and mute whenever. It'll be kind of fun for our instructors to see each other. Now y'all are not all of our summer instructors, but we kind of handpick some folks that are teaching new classes that may be new faces to LifeQuest. We wanted to put y'all out there for folks to see. We have people tuning in on our LifeQuest of Arkansas Facebook page um, in the Zoom room, in the classroom. Um, you only see part of that, but um, we have folks watching us here at Second Prez, and I'm seeing folks coming in on Facebook. And so this will be up on our Facebook page. And so we can get kind of a broader audience from there. But I wanted to say welcome to everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, and we've got Rich here, and I'm going to show you him in just a minute. We're keeping things real casual here at LifeQuest as per usual. But this is our guest speaker hour, um, and we invite uh, speakers from all types of careers, topics, subjects, industries to present uh, on, uh, on topics that we think would be of interest to our LifeQuest members. But today we really wanted to get out um, in front of our membership, our new summer in classes and instructors. And so I'm just gonna kind of go around the Hollywood squares that I see on my screen and have you introduce yourself and give a little snippet of your class for the summer. But before we get into the description, let me just do a quick introduction if that's okay. And then we'll go back and do um, the more uh, overview of your class for this summer. We have 45 minutes, so um, we'll keep it fairly brief, but we can come back to you if there are, are questions. Um, but so let me start with Mark, if you'll introduce yourself and uh, your, who you are. Well, I always wonder who I am. I'm, I'm never <laughs> quite sure. <laughs> the older I get, the less uh, secure and sure I am of who I am. But I'm Mark Clark, uh, and I'll be uh, teaching uh, a class on uh, law and religion in the United States. I. Uh, am uh, by retired, I'm a retired lawyer and also a retired uh, Presbyterian minister. I uh, was a trial lawyer, I practiced for about 20 years and uh, I was a, a parish pastor for about an equal number of years in uh, uh, Texas and in uh, uh, North Carolina. And my wife, uh, Carol, is a Presbyterian minister. She's a member of the, uh, of the Presbytery staff and uh, we moved uh, to Little Rock uh, six or seven years ago in order to retire. And uh, so she promptly got a job and uh, uh, I've been going back and forth trying to figure out how to, uh, uh, how to be and how to stay retired. And uh, what's working for me at this point is uh, I, uh, I teach a couple of classes at the Bowen at the UALR Law School. And among the classes that I teach is a, uh, is a seminar in law and religion. And I uh, got interested in that and it is a particularly interesting subject. Uh, and nowadays we have a, uh, a, a Supreme Court that has uh, uh, the, the last five to 10 years become enormously interested in religious matters. And that has uh, um, led to a number of headlines and a number of changes in uh, uh, in the way our courts and the way our laws have been interpreted uh, uh, in the protection of religious rights uh, and uh, depending upon one's uh, viewpoint uh, uh, 
the uh, uh, the protection or the lack thereof of any various anti discrimination laws. So, uh, what I will uh, shall I just uh, leave it there, Lee, or should I talk about the the class a little bit? We're going to come back to the class um, because I want to give brief introductions, <clears throat> and I'm going to let Abigail uh, say who she is and where, who she's with, and then we'll come back and do a little another circle about our classes. Very good. Hi, my name's Abigail Holler. I'm a financial planner at Conger Wealth Management, a certified financial planner, and I am to be the subject matter expert on financial topics this summer, which will be real nice. And Abigail is coming to us because our uh, curriculum committee member and volunteer extraordinaire Ann West made that connection. So we're thrilled that she did um, that for us. Thank you, Abigail. Similarly, we have Liam Hankins Hall, who Ann brought to us. I'm telling you, she's she's out there everywhere. Liam, tell us about yourself. Hi, I'm Liam, uh, and Ann West is a, a wonderful person. Know her through my church, First Methodist. Um, I am doing an AmeriCorps year with the Arkansas Hunger Relief Alliance in the Cooking Matters Department and have been there since the beginning of October. I'll be doing kind of a, a Cooking Matters class, our first kind of style class for seniors, uh, and we'll be focusing on single meals. So, Great. Yeah. And he's a Hendrix grad. Hendrix Heather. grad, that's right. Heather, so, you know, we'll put that plug in. I'm glad to have that. That's going to be a really great class. We've never had an Arkansas Hunger Alliance class at LifeQuest, so this will be a first. And we're gonna we're gonna be cook cooking in that class, so that'll be a, a, a treat, a real treat. Thank you, Liam. Uh, Rose, tell us about you. We're we're finally. Oh, you're muted. Unmute first. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. I'm Rose Virgil. I'm so excited to be here. Um, I moved here, it seems like yesterday, but I've been here about 18 years now from California. Ah, great. And it's just crazy how quickly that went by. Um, I have been an assistant teacher over at Pulaski Academy. I've had various jobs. I thought I, after COVID, I would get into semi-retirement, but that really didn't happen. I'm tutoring now. Um, I do alterations. I've taught sewing classes, dancing classes, and uh, a keen thing for me is just wanting to keep moving. And that's why I keep on calling Leah saying, is there something I can do over there again? Because I have done that other dance class. Um, I love it here. I want to get to know more people every day. And um, I just want to keep on going, going and going. Rose is going to put the active in our active engaged older adult membership. So she's going to be doing the line dancing class. Yes. Um, I'm going to skip over Heather because Rich has another appointment. So I'm going to let Rich talk about himself and his class. And then I know he needs to scoot. So okay. go ahead, Rich. Thank you so much. I am Rich Roy. Uh, I'm retired now. I've spent my last 14 years with the Heifer Project International. And many of you know, Heifer's been in the news lately with uh, uh, restructuring how they're going to use the building and inviting partner Lyon College in with uh, two, new, uh, two new schools. We're, we're looking forward to see how that works. Uh, I'm, I'm a member of the, the uh, curriculum community here at LifeQuest, and I'm also a member of the LifeQuest Folkies. And uh, we just finished our uh, last session today and our hoot nanny with uh, several participants joining, joining us. And, uh, anyway, that's that's been a joy. Uh, my my class for the summer uh, it, it it also revolves around music, and I've had the good fortune to work with many many groups, uh, other groups who have have a long history uh, in music in Arkansas, and we wanted to share that with you. We're going to uh, share some history and music from the group called the Choctaw Crawdads, who. Had, uh, got their start up at the Choctaw Boat Dock in Greer's Ferry area, the, the lake area. Uh, and uh, they've uh, had experience with the old days with Riverfest and like that. And we want to share that music in Arkansas history with you. And we'll have a couple of sessions this summer on that. And also work closely with a, with a, 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 a single player, a street musician uh, who goes by the name of Blind Boy White. Uh, 
he's a, he's a voice major, I think, from, from UA Fayetteville. He's, he's known music all his life. But he spent many years in Eureka, for example, uh, Basin, Basin Hotel Park area, uh, doing street music. And he wants to share that history with you and uh, all in keeping alive the street musician, the old blues band. Uh, and then the, the uh, last couple who have been, of course, it's worked with, they go by the title of Kit and Caboodle. And they, they want to share their time and history. And they, they bring a special niche of music. The, uh, 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 they call it the American Songbook, uh, music from the uh, 20s, 30s, and 40s. And uh, they'll, they'll, they'll be talking about that. So we really are excited about that and hope, hope you will uh, help everybody engage in that. And take a look, take a look at our piece in the, our soon to be mailed uh, brochure. Yes. Okay, I'll tell you thank, more about thank that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank Rich. you, everybody. I'm glad excited. you're on board with us. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Rich. Thanks for coming in. Uh, yes, our summer brochure is at, at the printer right now. It should be here early next week. We have a mail crew of volunteers who are going to be helping us get that ready to get in the mail. And then registration opens at 9 a.m. sharp on uh, June 13th. So we'll be ready for um, all these classes to start getting registered. And then they start July 5th. So it's the four weeks of July. Um, coming back around the circle, Mark, tell us a little bit more about um, your class. What's the title? What are you planning to cover? Oh, just an overview. Sure. Uh, thanks, Leah. The, uh, the, the, the class is going to be uh, uh, dealing primarily with uh, contemporary uh, appellate court cases. That sounds really boring, but an appellate court case is, <clears throat> uh, is the, the cases that you read about in the news. And uh, I'll give us a little bit of history, uh, you know, of how the uh, uh, religious laws and practices have come into conflict historically with uh, laws going back uh, to colonial America and talk a little bit about the founding at Plymouth Rock and Massachusetts Bay and the Puritans and the Pilgrims and how we evolved religiously uh, as a country. But I'm not going to do a whole lot of lecturing. I, I feel we need to do a little bit of background on the colonial America, how we got the First Amendment, uh, how did that come into being. But primarily what I'm going to be doing in the four weeks is I'm going to lay out a case that has, you know, great uh, significance uh, for us uh, today, and I'll lay out the facts, and then I will invite the class. I'll lay out what are the, some of the issues, what the religious belief or practice is that's come into conflict with a state law or a federal law, and then I'm going to ask people to 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 talk about it. Uh, what do you, what do you think? Which uh, what should the outcome be and why and how would that help our uh, uh, help us as a nation uh, if you decide one way what are some of the issues and uh, and then I'll talk about how the court actually decided the case and what they felt like uh, the important issues were so uh, <clears throat> I'll go back to a historic case to, to develop some background that called the Piote case where uh, 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 some uh, Native Americans who happened to be uh, drug counselors uh, were also members of a Native American religion uh, in which uh, uh, ingesting peyote, a uh, hallucinogen, was an important part of their, of their religious practice. Well, uh, the Controlled Substances Act uh, uh, made the ingestion of peyote absolutely verboten and a criminal offense. So, the Supreme Court had to decide. This is a legitimate religious practice. Nobody was saying that that, that these uh, uh, petitioners weren't uh, uh, practicing the religion, but here we had this criminal law uh, that needs to be enforced. So how would you decide that case and why? And what were the implications? And then I'll talk about how the court actually decided. And then we have a lot of cases that are have just come out in the last a couple of years in which you have uh, deeply held religious practices. Uh, we have uh, a, a religious order of nuns who felt like uh, having uh, contraceptives available 
to their employees as mandated under the Affordable Care Act made them complicit with contraception, which goes against their uh, uh, strongly held value. So you've got a federal law that says that the employee uh, women are entitled to uh, to contraceptives, and you have a religious group who says that, uh, well, that violates my religious practice. Who wins and why? So there'll be a lot of discussion. Uh, I'll, I'll be asking a lot of questions on uh, why do you think that is right? How do you think that that, uh, uh, that the court should have decided? And then, of course, we're going to spend uh, quite a bit of time with the, uh, the Dobbs versus uh, Jackson Health uh, abortion case uh, that should come out uh, before the uh, before the class begins. It should come out sometime in t uh, in uh, June. We have a taste of that from the uh, leaked Alito opinion. Uh, the ramifications are going to be enormous, not just in the area of women's reproductive rights, but if if the draft opinion is the true opinion of the Supreme Court, we don't have any reason to think that it isn't. It's also going to reopen the possibility of the of the court changing the laws that are currently in place regarding uh, same sex marriage, interracial marriage, uh, even the uh, ability of either married or unmarried uh, uh, persons obtaining contraceptives. Uh, uh, it's it's a uh, it's quite a time for the intersection of law and religion, and so that's basically what the class will be about. So in other words, just some light, fun, summer, sure. summer, just. <laughs> <laughs> no reason you know. can't have fun with it. <laughs> oh, very timely. And I, you know, he, yeah. he, he was kind of cautious about some of the topics. And I was like, no, 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 bring it all, bring it all to LifeQuest. We just tiptoe right over all that controversy. Our members are sharp, engaged. They'll keep you on your toes, Mark, and they will have some opinions. And we, uh, we really, really appreciate you bringing um, the weight of these topics for us to think about and process together as a group. We really are glad, so glad that we're law and religion and you're the right person to, to teach it to LifeQuest this summer. Thank you. All right, well, thank you. Yeah, looking forward to that for sure. Um, Abigail, another heady topic. Oh, it's just like fluff. It's going to be so easy. <laughs> beach, beach reads, really. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> so Financial Matters uh, is a custom-built presentation with four classes, and each class has a theme. The first is going to be cash flow control. The big idea behind all the Financial Matters classes is that I wanted to develop something that spoke to the concerns of seniors who have already retired, have already made the social security decision and made a lot of decisions. And thinking about what comes next, I've been very privileged over the course of the last 10 years at Conger Wealth Management to walk with our clientele through the aging process and then eventually settling their estates. And I made a lot of observations that I thought could be helpful toward people looking toward the future uh, financially. So first class is about getting control of cash flow um, and maintaining control of what you spend money on, when and why, and having backup available uh, should you go through a period of illness or a period where you need some support from family or deputized members, having that all prepared in advance. Um, I've seen different families operate different ways with money. And I've noticed that families who have a deputized family member who's trained and ready to go when help is needed has had a far better outcome than families where people have tried to retain total control of money management, but then things start slipping. Nobody's trained and ready to come catch it as it starts to slip. And ironically enough, maintaining that very high level of control actually had made it harder for family members to adhere 
to their elders big wishes and most important areas of control. So I want to decouple total control from the idea of driving the whole financial I, financial goal. So I'll give you a quick example. So I, a clientele, she's unfortunately going through uh, dementia right now. And if you've seen some of this or have some conversations about it, people will often lose the ability to do what I would think of as fine or low level financial decision making, the basic addition of numbers, making sure bills get paid, all of that stuff, but they're still in complete control of their faculties of what they want to see happen. And so this class is designed around the idea of finding the right deputy, training that person so that what the big desires, what you want to see happen in your life happens, even if you're not there writing out every little check. The second class is about getting organized, getting paperwork under control, simplifying financial accounts, because if you've done it yourself your whole life, you already know where everything is. But if you're having somebody step in to spot you like an exercise would be spotted to follow behind, make sure things are getting done and then help you if you need a little help from time to time. Uh, getting everything simplified, organized, put together and in in order helps a lot so that you can control the big things and concentrate on what's important. Third class is planning for care and planning for care does not necessarily mean final care. I've had clientele and people that I've known go through this process. I've had one lady get a cancer diagnosis, go through about two years of absolutely shattering illness. It just the cusp of death. She's running around doing whatever she wants to do now. She got better, she's fine. And so when I talk about planning for care, not planning for the final illness necessarily, but as you age, it's tougher to recover from injuries. You're more likely to get sick. It's just an unfortunate fact. But with fabulous medical care like we have, you could come back just fine. And who wants to come back to a giant mess? So we can prevent that giant mess and have things in place to catch plan B and plan C that uh, just in case plan A, where I stay healthy my whole life and then die in my sleep doesn't work out. So easy, light, pleasant conversations are what I expect to happen. And the final, because I like to end on a happy note, right? Just something like bluebirds and sunshine. We'll talk about legacy issues, <laughs> sharing estates for settlement. <laughs> um, a lot of people will do the estate planning, go to an estate lawyer, get the documentation together. Uh, but not really know what's going to happen, not prepare their family for what's going to happen, and then inadvertently create a snarl in the paperwork that the lawyer doesn't really catch because the lawyer doesn't see everything. And what happens is a lot of what I've done is slide in there because I've helped settle estates. I'm not a lawyer. I've not created the estate paperwork and I can't do the uh, the legal part of the estate settlement process, but there's a huge organization component of making sure everything get, gets buttoned up in the right order and knowing what paperwork is required. And just coaching somebody through this, you gotta remember the odds are very good that if our attendees' adult children are settling their estate, it's probably the first one they've ever done. And it's also the most emotionally impactful. So having all that put together in advance is a wonderful gift to give your adult children. So like ice cream, puppies, bluebirds, it's all <laughs> going to be- It's all good stuff. It's important nice. stuff and it's, and it's human stuff. Um, you know, and a lot of our members as I've talked to them have, you know, the, yeah, they have a will, they may have a trust, they have a plan, but they did it 20 years ago or 15 years ago. And things, things may have changed in that family dynamic and they really, have they really that, I mean, they've sort of put it on the shelf, like check, it's done, but, you know, kind of brushing that off and looking at it again, is this, is this going forward today? You know, so looking at it, I think it's very important. We're so glad that you're here. And Abigail has a way, as does like Mark, of uh, taking complex uh, in important inf information and breaking it down in a relatable human level. And we really appreciate you being on our schedule this summer as well. Thank you. Um, Liam, 
What are we going to talk about? What are we going to cook this summer? Are we going to cook? Uh, well, what am I going to uh, get to taste? Is what I want to know. <laughs> I love to start out. Uh, normally, I do this kind of thing with children in uh, and their parents. So we'll go to the children's library or the any community center, and we'll do the first class. I'll start out with little mini pizzas on English muffins and a dessert. Yeah. And I always make the the dessert a surprise, but I'll tell you, it's going to be black bean brownies. Okay. Okay. Because people are always like, <laughs> okay. Yikes, I don't know about that. But no, they're really Next. very delicious. I enjoy making them uh, and not telling people what they are and then gauging their reaction afterwards. It's. Uh, I've never met a brownie I didn't like. So <laughs> you're looking at bringing some you know, nutrition into. Oh, right. We're, we're, at the Hunger Alliance, we're focused on healthy, affordable meals for families. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to take that uh, and scale it down from these recipes that we have for families of four and five into meals that serve two or less. Mm -hmm. Because I realize that as we get older, we don't eat as much. And we tell people all the time, oh, throw it in the freezer, you know, save it for later, leftovers. But you know, it sits in the freezer six, eight months, and you don't want to eat it again. And it's such a, so focusing on meals that build on each other. If you buy these ingredients in the grocery store, what can you, how many different meals can you get out of that? And then uh, maybe making one big meal a month and portioning it out. So we'll focus on recipes, reducing recipes, uh, kitchen basics, uh, covering some safety stuff, because uh, it's always good to get a refresher on that. We'll talk about uh, whole grains and fruits and veggies in the second class, protein in the third class, and then I'm gonna end with a, a kind of a virtual grocery store tour to how, how to shop efficiently as you're going through the store. All of our programming is based on the dietary guidelines from the government called MyPlate that replaced the food pyramid probably 10 years ago. And so as we go through each class, uh, and especially with the grocery store tour, you know, you're making everything a reflection of my plate. As you're putting stuff into the shopping cart, you know, make it look like my plate. Half of your plate is fruits and vegetables, half of it is grains and protein. So I really think it's going to be an interesting class. I've never done something like this. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what kind of stuff happens, what kind of feedback we get. And, uh, Tell us a little bit about your background, because I know you had some neat training um, outside of Arkansas, and I think that's fun to know. So after I graduated Hendricks in 2018, I went to work at a uh, running a kitchen at a camp and retreat center in Colorado, and I did that for the better part of five years, and it really got a, a an interesting perspective on how to cook for large groups, think 50, 75, 100 people at a time, three times a day. So that is where my, my bread and butter is, cooking for these large groups. But I knew really relatively little about affordable, healthy eating. Mm -hmm. A lot of the stuff that I've learned through the Cooking Matters program, I'm like, oh, holy cow, I wish I'd known that five years ago. You know, so, so to bring that also to the table, uh, because we want to eat healthy food, but we also want to eat tasty food. And what I focused on in the camp was making tasty food that everyone wanted to eat. So. Well, Heather and I are new, em, newly uh, empty nesters. And I don't know about you, Heather, but I'm in a rut. Like, what? I don't know. I'm tired. I don't want to cook. I don't want to. <laughs> and cooking for, you know, cooking for a family was more fun than cooking for two people, you know, or, or one person, you know, if it's just me. So this, this will, I'll be really uh, glad to, to see the recipes and get some samples. <laughs> Even black bean brownies. I think that's what we good. It'll be tasty for sure. <laughs> Thank you, Heather. Looking forward to that. I mean, Heather, I was looking at Heather. I meant Liam. <laughs> um, Rose, tell us about line dancing. You're going to make us move. I am so excited about this class. Okay. It is about moving. And this is a heart healthy class. It's good for your heart to keep going. And it makes your heart happy at the same time. I have never seen anybody dance who isn't smiling. So moving and being happy um, 
that was the thrust for me because that's what I like to do. And I am a Medicare card carrying person. So I know how to take it easy a little bit. I w would never push anybody, but you are going to reap the benefits of this class. We all know what moving can do for you, but the line dancing class is gonna help you with strength, cardio, balance, uh, sense of timing with the music. Um, it's just gonna give you so much fun and enthusiasm. What I like about line dancing is people, people are in a line, right? Hopefully we get a big class, so we have several lines. But when you dance in unison like that, you feel like synchronized, a synchronized swimmer. It just is something <laughs> special to watch. I think one thing, one of the reasons I've been wanting to do this too is because um, you hear country music and you, you, or you go to a wedding and everybody's doing the cupid shuffle. That is a line dance. And what fun is that to do that? But why do we have to just do it at a wedding? So my thought was, let's do it in this class. Let's do it in a class and just, just come together and have so much fun. The moves are going to be suited for us, you know, a little bit older. And you go at your own pace. Uh, bring on the cowboy hat. Bring on the cowboy boots and just <laughs> strut and have a good time. And I know once the music's playing that um, people are going to get into it and just be joyful. Okay, but what um, if you have two left feet like me and are like really uncoordinated? <laughs> are you going to have a smile on your face? If you come <laughs> to this class and have a smile on your face, two left feet, that's great. We'll just keep you turning this way all the time. Let's <laughs> go in a circle. <laughs> but that's the whole point. Anybody yeah. can do it. Anybody can do it. We're going to do some basic things, uh, some basic steps. Like I said, the the... Cupid Shuffle will be in there. There's a Cowboy Cha-Cha. Don't ask me to do anything right now. Cotton Eye Joe. I, I will stick in, um, because, because of music, you, you've got to find the beat and just go with the beat. I'm going to pull in a classic. You know, um, I'm not sure what it is. Um, I, I'm an old soul, so it's like 40s, 50s music. So I will pull in a classic and we'll be able to strut to that and, and go around. I think it's one of those, you know, you're going to slap your leg and just keep on going. And um, I think it'll be easy to follow. I plan on it being easy to follow. But um, the importance of just moving, moving to the music. Um, it's a lot just, of and, fun. Your uh, line yes, dancing is so much fun. And when you go to some place and they're doing it, you don't know. <laughs> it's, yeah. And, and, I always feel left out. <laughs> and that's the whole thing. I've always... I wanted to go to um, line dancing, um, but it always seems like there's so many young people there in a bar <laughs> and it's like, okay, so this is going to be so much more comfortable and it's going to be um, something that we can all do and bring on the left feet. If you have two right <laughs> feet, I want you to come too. I just think okay. it's going to be so much fun. All right, y'all are going to have to laugh at me. I have a trip to Nashville coming up in September, so you got to help me get ready, Rose. Oh, good. Okay, <laughs> that'll, that'll, that'll be good. But I want everybody to know how many benefits you will get from this class. Yeah, you won't know so you're fun. exercising. You really won't. You might want to bring a, a towel. You might <laughs> just to mop off a little bit, but um, it's going to be so much fun. You're, you're going to get so well, many having seen Rose in action because she did you taught a swing class here a couple of years ago she knows her yeah. stuff and she does make it fun so we're we're lucky to have you, well, thank you. so Look please join everybody please join yes thank you so much we need a lot of people for that class for sure yes well last but not least this is outside of a typical class but we wanted to do bring back some social uh engagement activities and this is definitely that heather what do you have planned for us? okay am i unmuted now yeah go ahead okay so we decided that we would do a we were calling it bruise and bites pub crawl um, and each tuesday night we're going to go to a different brewery slash restaurant so all of these microbreweries on the list, July 5th, Lost 40 Brewery, July 12th, Brood and Barley, July 19th, Diamond Bear, and July 26th, Vino's 
are uh, mainly microbreweries, but they're also restaurants with excellent food. So we thought this would be a good chance to get everyone together for a social hour, but also learn a little bit about um, the brewing process and enjoy some great food. Plus, the thing I like about this is it's two of them are in downtown Little Rock and two of them are in downtown North Little Rock. So we'll get kind of to see downtown and what's happening down there as well. Um, and But because there is so much happening downtown, both of those places, and there is quite a bit of road construction, as you all know, um, we are going to offer a shuttle. So if you want to come to, to Second Press and park and ride the shuttle, that will be available to you. But we're just we're excited just to be able to get everybody together and do a fun summer thing. And if you don't drink beer, there are other drinks available and there's good food and it's just a chance to get together and have a good time. Not necessarily educational, but I bet we will learn something about each other. <laughs> it's educational learning how beer is made. Whether sure. you drink it or not, it's still sure, sure, sure. It's educational. Yeah. Uh, so the shuttle is uh, is is not meant for. Um, well, it is what it is. It's first come, first serve, and you do have to be able to drive from Second Pres back home, so partake responsibly. But it is mostly because a lot of these pl people are uh, places are downtown, and we're not sure if everybody knows where they are. So you can always carpool together and follow the shuttle. If we, if you don't have if you didn't make the shuttle, I think the shuttle seats what 15, and, 16. Let's see, we have it on there. And the whole uh, the whole tour of uh, the class is twenty. You know, we we can't overload these places with fifty people, but but we've got twenty spots um, per date, and then the shuttle is is first come first served. And fourteen first, people in the shuttle. Fourteen people, so not as quite as many as is are in the class, but we can take twenty to each of these. Uh, restaurant lo and brewery locations and it'll just be fun we get to meet some new people um I'll, i've got some some women that i've talked to that are single that might bring a friend outside of life quest is fine um, it has its own separate registration on the registration form but you can always call the office here if you have any questions but we we wanted to try to do some fun things now that some of us are feeling safer getting out and about Mm -hmm. um in public and at restaurants and it will be just if you're wondering it will be um not a prepared menu so it's not you sit down and and this is what you're eating we will order off menu yeah it's so, order on your own there's a ten dollar cover charge and that basically helps us with gas um yeah. lynn you had a question go ahead you can unmask while you ask your question so okay. you can, hear you. can you hear me okay yeah go ahead on the list was dog training, and I'm real curious about that. Is okay, so I didn't get get uh, one of our representatives. Let me make sure if we have any more questions about the, the brews and bites. That's in the evening on Tuesday nights, not a real heavy traffic time for pubs, but um, four different breweries, two in Little Rock, two in North Little Rock, and each, you can go to one or you can go to all four. You can just sign up a la carte. It's just for fun, just for fun. And um, we're, we're glad that Heather's coordinated. Well, that. and I do have one quick question for Liam. The uh, peanut butter noodles, that's probably not what they're called. Isn't there a recipe in Cooking Matters that's some kind of noodles with peanut butter, kind of a I, Thai inspired? I think so. There's a Thai noodle or something. I haven't yeah. made it yet. Uh, but I hear from others that have that it's pretty tasty. Well, I'm just going to put that little bug in your ear that that's a favorite of mine. So and mine. <laughs> if that works out, that would be awesome. Okay. okay. Duly noted. Right. Thanks. <laughs> no influence here. Um, dog training, Lynn. Okay. So all of our dog trainers are working other jobs as are some of our presenters on this panel today. So thank you very much. We're almost wrapped up, but I couldn't get them to come, but I can tell you about the class because I have corn. I'm the coordinator for that class. So oh, let me look at my schedule real quick. So we're having four. Did, we did this about three years ago. We had dogs and dog trainers. This is a slightly different group of people, but the first dog trainer that's coming is from Paws Mahal. Don't you love that name? It's Carol Culpepper, and she's my dog's trainer, and that's where I board my dogs in Sherwood, and she's going to be talking about your pet companion, your home pet, some and some how to kind of deal with some um, problematic areas that you might have with your own dogs. 
uh, moving through doors and gates, um, leash control, barking at the window, things like that. She's going to be kind of talking about some, some home um, things that you might find with your own um, companion pet. And um, so that's Paws Mahal the first week. The second week is Erin um, Sullivan from Possibilities. And she's gonna be talking about service trained dogs and what she works with particularly are dogs trained to assist with PTSD. And because service training is a huge and broad, I mean, there can be all kinds with physical and emotional and psychological and uh, health disabilities. And so her particular focus is on PTSD. So we're gonna learn about that. And then the third week, if is Kathy Mathewitz from Little Rock Dog Training Club, and they're gonna set up a small agility course in Second Hall. And so she's got some weaving poles. Each one of these trainers is bringing a dog or two with them. So she's got some hoops and she's gonna talk about what, how, what kind of dogs are best suited for agil agility training and what they do at the Little Rock Dog Training Club. And the fourth week is Pamela Padgett with Conway Dog Training, um, there's Conway Canine Companions, and she's going to be talking about scent work. So there's like a whole national society of canine scent workers. Can you believe? <laughs> I mean, I didn't even know. So she's going to, they do things, not just the airport, like drug sniffing dogs. That's one kind, but they can sniff and detect when you have a drop in your blood sugar, you know, or, or, or cancer. She's going to be doing some scent training for the um, for you for you to work with at home and how to like stimulate your dog and have a fun game. But it's like getting your dog to work, and so she's going to be doing some nose work, she calls it, and scent work. It's a whole new area for me, so I'm fascinated with this. And each one of these trainers has their own philosophy, their own background, and their own experience. It may, you know, not jive with, necessarily with the way you've been training your dog, but that's, you know, they're bringing their own opinions with them and we're just learn. We'll learn what they have to say. So I'm really looking forward to, to seeing them and their dogs. It's always fun to see what the dogs can do. So Arnie's not going to be there, but there'll be somebody else to talk about cancer. Sniffing, well, I don't know that she'll specifically talk about cancer. Arnie Ferrando came with the cancer sniffing dogs and his grant is no longer up and running to support but, that. So but we, not the able. important thing is we don't bring our own dogs. You do not bring your own dogs. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we cannot have anybody's dogs except for the dog trainer in the building. Our second Presbyterian church will not let us ever have classes. <laughs> so please do not bring your, keep your doggies at home and we will uh, enjoy our trainers tell, telling us about what to do with them when we get back. Okay, I think we are about out of time. I know that our, some of our panelists here have to go to work and I do appreciate everybody for, for showing up today, telling us about your classes. This is a small sample of what we have going on. We have 30 classes on the schedule for the summer term. That's huge. We really hope that you all will come and join us. Most of those are in-person classes. Some are online and a few are hybrid, but this is such a great selection. We've got law and religion, financial matters, cooking, dance, music, a pub crawl. I mean, what more could you ask for? Thank you everybody for being with us. <laughs> and we'll see you July 5th, the week of. Thank you, Leah. Thanks everyone, bye-bye. Bye. Register June 13th. Bye.